Good morning, welcome to Ask Coffee Online. My name is Chef Caesar, and today I'm going to be preparing our quail. These uh, little birds have been used uh, throughout the world cuisines for hundreds of years, and today I'm going to be making a sauté quail. It's really easy to prepare. And uh, like I said, some of these uh, birds, since they're like wild, their meat is really uh, dried up because they don't uh, build a lot of fat. So you have to be careful when you prepare them not to overcook them. Also, it's a good idea to put them in the brine uh, with some salt water. Maybe you want to add some more uh, herbs or flavors. Uh, it's going to help to keep the meat moist. You can either saute them, you know, bake them in the oven, uh, stuff them. If you're going to bake them, it's a good idea to wrap them with some bacon to give them some uh, fat. You know, it's going to cover the meat with some fat and it's going to keep it moist. Also, if you put some stuffing in there too, it's going to help uh, to keep some of the moisture too in the meat. As well, you can uh, braise them in some kind of sauce. Today, I'm going to make uh, raspberry sauce. But before I start, you know, cutting up the quail, I want to start the sauce before because this is going to cook really quick. So I'm going to throw my little uh, saucepan on. I got a, about a couple of ounces of butter here. Actually, one now, so I'm going to use for this. And this is going to be something that you guys can make, you know, really easy at home. You know, it's uh, easy to prepare a meal. Probably less than half an hour is going to take. And uh, I'm melting some butter here. And I got some really uh, fine nice shallots, about one tablespoon of shallots. And uh, when you get quail, you can buy them pretty much you know, anywhere in the supermarket, the specialty stores. Uh, sometimes, most of the time, they come frozen. You can get them uh, semi boneless, which means the breast bone is being removed. Today I got whole ones. I want to show you how you can do this at home. It's really easy to do the bone quail. It's really nothing to worry about. I'm going to show you how. It's really simple. It's like the bone in a chicken. Same thing. Except it's a little tiny bird. It's a little more... Uh, you got to be a little more careful. So I got some of my shallots cooking in here. Be careful not to burn them. You don't want to... You just want to sweat them. Until they're translucent. Like cooking onions the same thing and I'm going to add some uh, white wine I'm using some Pinot Gris you can use any kind of wine Chardonnay about a quarter cup of wine also I'm going to use some uh, port wine same thing about a quarter cup a little bit more maybe now we're going to have our sauce going here I'm going to start, you know, fixing the quail here. So we take this, uh, this little tiny bird, looks like a chicken. We're going to, uh, I'm going to shrimp some wings. So it makes a nice representation. Just pull the wing back. If you want to do a lot, you can save this little tiny, like, piece of wings, and also the bones. You can make a stock. If I was going to do a lot of them, I would save them. But today, I'm not going to do too many. I'm only going to do two. But if I was in the restaurant, when I was going to prepare a lot of quail, I would save this, and they would make a great stock for the sauce. So you want to kind of pull this out of there like this. You want to use your paring knife, nice and sharp. You want a tiny knife. You don't want to use a huge knife, because as you can see, these birds are really tiny. So, okay. Now, I'm also going to do the legs. Just want to kind of scrape this the tendons. They're really tough. Okay. There it goes, nice and clean. Just got around the leg like this. So, way here. Okay. Now we're going to lay the quill in its back. You want to cut along the breastbone. Be careful not to cut too much meat off because they don't have a lot of meat as it is. And just, just kind of uh, put your knife against the breastbone like this. Go down. Okay. 
Okay. Around the oyster back here. There you have. I got a nice uh, little breast there. I also want to remove the bone from the tie right here, a little tiny bone. Let's go around. Just kind of scrape the meat back. Just crack the bone. And then you pull it out. Simple as that. See how easy it is? There you go. Now we're going to do the other side. Same way. Very easy. Okay. Do you guys have any questions? Feel free to you know ask me. Like I said, this point you could save. I was going to allow you roast them and make a nice stock for the sauce. But today I don't need them. I'll throw them away. But if I was going to do a lot, like I said before, I would definitely save them. Okay. Take this bone two out of here. And this is a very delicate meat, it's really nice and tasty. So it's worth, you know, giving it a try. There you go. Now you have your four pieces here. There you go. Trim some of this skin off. I'm going to put it right here in my plate. Oh, my sauce is almost ready. Should clean it. cutting board with some uh, towel with some bleach. Okay, now I'm gonna now I'm gonna add some raspberries preserves. About two tablespoons with no seeds. There you go. Made in some uh, raspberry wine too. About a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. If the sauce gets too thick, you can also add a little more wine. You want to mix it really nice like this. It's got a nice consistency. I got some uh, fresh raspberries I'm going to throw in there. Make sure you break them down when you're whisking them. I'm going to add a little more pour wine because it kind of reduced a little too much. This is going to be a nice sweet sauce. As you can see, it's really easy to make. It's really not that complicated at all. You want to break down the fresh raspberries a little bit. Add a little salt and pepper. This is a nice, easy to make pan sauce. Okay. Now then, I'm going to add a little more butter. Half the butter goes in the beginning, half the butter goes to the end. This is going to make the sauce nice and uh, shiny. It's going to also help, help thicken up the sauce a little if it's too runny. And you've got a wonderful raspberry sauce. There you go. 
It's got a real nice consistency. And I'm going to put it aside. I'm going to start uh, cooking my quail here. I got a saute pan here. And I got my quail ready. Make sure you dry it up real nice. So when you put it in the pan, it's not going to, you know, the water is going to react with the oil. You're going to get burned. So make sure you dry it up real nice before it goes in the pan. I'm going to season the quail with some salt and pepper. I'm going to put some olive oil here. And they cook really quick. I'm going to have to fry them. Also, I got here some morel mushrooms that I'm going to be using for my quill. They go really well with wild game. They're nice. You know, I got some uh, dry morels. And you can just hydrate them, put them in some warm water for a half an hour. And they become nice and uh, moist like this. You know, sometimes you can find them fresh, but they're real expensive. Even these are kind of expensive, but they're really nice. They got a real wonderful flavor. You're going to really, you know, like it with the quail. Also, I got some uh, fresh thyme here. I'm going to put a little fresh thyme to infuse some flavor into the quail. And I'm going to get ready here. Got my oil getting warm here. And as you can see, it's really uh, not that hard to cook. I mean, you can also, like... Like I said before, roast them in the oven, stuff them, and, you know, if you have a lot of them, you can do, you know, many different things. But I'm just going to, you know, show this uh, easy process, you know, pan frying it. Okay. Make sure your oil is nice and hot. Okay. Skin down first you want to get the skin nice and crispy okay. mm -hmm. if it's splattering too much you can put a lid on top of this stove in the home a lot of you guys kind of ask me what you can do put a lid a little upset so you're not like steaming you know the item that you're cooking you want to saute so you want to kind of have some of the steam escape a little bit but you can put a lid a little bit you know off to the side so it's not you know going all over the place and they're going to cook really quick i want to turn down the heat so they're not splattering too much as you can see the moisture from the liquid starts to you know go in the oil and it splatters because of the water so you can see it's, they cook really fast I'm going to add some of the thyme to the oil. It's going to give a nice herb taste from the fresh thyme. You can always use rosemary too, but it's a little more stronger. I like fresh uh, thyme, it's a little, you know, mild. See, it's cooking really nice. I'm going to put the lid on a little, little bit so it's not going all over the place. As you can see, it kind of splatters a lot. I'm going to add my mushrooms here, so I'll tame a little bit. I cook everything in the same pan. And you can use a different kind of mushrooms like portobellos, trumpets are good too. I chose to do, you know, morels because I really like them, that's what I found. Fine a little bit. I'm 
And you can feel the texture too. It starts to get nice and firm. It's like cooking the chicken breast. We have a question. Yes, I put some, uh, the question was, did I say some of the meat before I start cooking? Yes, I put some salt and pepper before I began cooking. I also deglaze the pan with some little poor wine just to give a little nice sweet taste to the mushrooms as well. Now I'm gonna put my pan to the side. I'm gonna let it rest over here because I'm gonna make a little potato hash to go with my fish. Something that I, yes, we have another question. Uh, the question was, can you use this recipe for chicken? Yes, you can. I'm going to have the recipe posted, and you guys can use it for chicken, you know, the same way. Okay, I'm going to make a little potato hash here for my, to go with my quail. So like I say, you can make a complete meal really quick, especially when you're cooking something delicate like this. It cooks really fast. A little olive oil here. I'm going to pan fry my potatoes. These are, uh, I probably, you know, blanch them. I cut them real small thighs, you blanch them. And uh, for about five minutes, you cool them off so they don't keep cooking. And then you're gonna, that, that way they don't turn brown. And when you brown, they cook really quick. So they probably, you know, cook. They're really pretty soft. So you don't need to cook them too long. You can eat them right now. You wanna put salt in the water. That way you have a nice flavor to the potatoes. I'm gonna cook them with some peppers and onions. This is gonna be my, my starch for my uh, quail today. I wanna get the oil nice and hot. Because you want to brown the potatoes, give a nice brown color. You want to see the quail? I got the quail over here. You know, it's gonna, it's gonna be nice. Smells great. And I put the lid on to keep it warm. So I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like. I'm gonna add up a. Brown my potatoes real nice. I'm gonna add a little more salt and pepper because the peppers and onions don't have any, any season, so I wanna add a little more. use a different starch. I like to do a soft white polenta too with quail. It goes really well. Or you can do a fried polenta. You want to get it nice and, uh, you know, let it set in the refrigerator. Then you cut it and you fry it too. It goes really nice. before I add some of the peppers in there because otherwise once you add the peppers all the moisture comes out the potatoes won't get you know they're nice and brown I want to give, give them a little color before I put the rest of the vegetables in there peppers here for color. See how nice it's going to look. There you go. Put this to the side over here.
here we get a nice potato hash. That's really nice. Once you add the peppers and onions, the flavor is going to come, you know, even nicer. It adds a lot of flavor to your potatoes. Okay, now I'm going to shut it off, and now I'm going to start plating my dish, which I have my sauce over here already, as you can see. It's nice, it's not that, you know, thick, or it's not too runny, it's pretty uh, good consistency. I'm going to just put it aside when I get my plate over here to start plating my dish. Well. I'm going to put some of these potatoes down first in the little mold here I got. pack it down so hopefully it will stay in the mold when you take the mold out of here. Just put a little pressure on top so they kind of pack down like this. There you go. Got my quail over here. I'm going to put some of this uh, or else over here. On so I also got some asparagus that I got. So there you go. I got some asparagus tips over here. My vegetable. There you go. As you can see, this is really easy to you know plate items like this. You guys can do it. You guys do a great job already. So. Now I'm going to put my quill here. Look at that. Okay. Take them all out of here. Hopefully they stay up there. Yeah. We'll see. Try my best. Okay. I got some quill eggs. I got hard boil here. There you go. To make a nice garnish. Now I'm gonna do some of the raspberry sauce to top finish off my dish. some around here some on the other side here too I'm gonna finish it off with a little sprig of thyme on the top here and there you have nice easy to make some saute quail uh, if you guys uh, have any questions, I would like to be more than happy to answer for you. Otherwise, I want to wrap this up, and I'm going to be waiting for you next week. Hopefully, we get this going early for you guys. I'm sorry for the inconvenience this morning. Here we are again. Thank you, and have a nice day.